This is Walter Cronkite speaking, taking you back more than 100 million years to the Mesozoic Age. Here in our first picture is a strange and unfamiliar Earth, full of giant ferns, steaming marshes, dominated by the huge dinosaurs we see towering over the landscape. They were kings of all they surveyed for millions of years. No man was around to challenge their rule, but if the brawniest athlete of today were here in this scene, he would be no more than a quick bite in the mighty jaws of the meat-eating allosaurs we see in the center of the landscape, looking about hungrily for their next meal. They would undoubtedly prefer to dine on the huge brontosaurs in the background, safely out of reach in their marsh, but they'll probably settle for the spiny ridge stegosaurs in the foreground. After a terrible, earth-shaking fight which will match their sword-like teeth against the stegosaur's spiky tail. Now let us move forward in time to picture two. Where giant ferns once grew in steaming swamps, we see today only eroded rock, sand, and desert plants. Where are the mighty dinosaurs? Perhaps the huge fossilized skeleton of one lies somewhere in these very rocks, buried for millions of years, waiting for us to discover it. We're at the beginning of one of the most exciting detective stories in history. We meet a leading dinosaur detective, or paleontologist, in number three. Dr. Theodore White is shown examining a clue, part of the skull of a meat-eating dinosaur. Eminent paleontologists like Dr. White teach us where to look for buried dinosaurs and how to recognize them when we find them and how to take specimens out of their ancient beds. Let us see what kind of detectives we make as we start out in picture four on our own dinosaur hunt. Here we have traveled to the American Southwest and are in the wilderness of fossil country. Ahead of us are many days, even weeks, of searching for evidence of dinosaurs, evidence such as we see in number five. This is what a fossil looks like. It is usually embedded in rock, as you can see here. There are all kinds of fossils, some so tiny they can only be seen with the aid of a microscope. But we are after a dinosaur. Moving to number six. We see a member of our party walking out the fossil beds. Our geologists have found an outcropping of rock from the Mesozoic age, the age of dinosaurs, containing evidence of fossils. We'll follow it to find out how the rocks lie, hoping to find a dinosaur at the end of the trail. In picture seven, we find ourselves scrambling up a cliff, for we must go where the clues lead us, combining the courage and endurance of a mountain climber with the skills and patience of a prospector. It's hot and hard work, and who can blame us for thinking maybe it's time to head back to camp for a cool drink and a rest? But wait, what is that we just passed? Let's retrace our steps in number eight. Here it is, buried treasure, buried for millions of years, a fragment of fossilized dinosaur bone. Thirst and fatigue are forgotten as with hearts pounding, we uncover this first piece of evidence in our dinosaur hunt. We must be careful with our tools as we remove the overburden of rock from this and the other bones of the skeleton, for we feel sure now that the remains of a dinosaur lie buried right at our feet. Now turn the slide card over. Here in picture nine, we see a scientist cleaning the exposed bones of our specimen with a brush. Dinosaur detectives must do their work as delicately as police dust for fingerprints at the scene of a crime. The slightest blow from a hammer would shatter these ancient bones. In number 10, we see a specimen being doctored for safe shipment back to the laboratory. With the tender care of a surgeon putting a broken bone in a cast, our experts wrap the brittle remains of the dinosaur in layers of burlap dipped in plaster, even though in this case our patient has been dead for millions of years. Move now to picture 11. The huge bone you see being excavated here proves that our hunt is even more successful than we had dared hope. We came looking for a dinosaur, and we've discovered one of the largest of them all, the mighty brontosaur. Look at the size of that bone. It's not hard to believe that the earth trembled with each step this giant took. Now our specimens carefully plastered and crated, we travel, in number 12, 
to the museum laboratory. After being unpacked, cleaned, and shellacked, the larger bones are drilled and steel rods inserted to support them for mounting. Mounting the scattered pieces of our dinosaur is a bit like assembling a giant jigsaw puzzle. Let's see if our puzzle has worked out as we move to picture 13. Here he is. All 67 feet of probably the largest kind of animal ever to walk the land. In spite of his great size, look at the stretch of that neck. The vegetarian brontosaur was no match for the steam shovel jaws of smaller but fiercer meat-eating dinosaurs who dined on him. Where cows and cowboys roam the American West today, the brontosaur provided up to 35 tons of beef on the hoof millions of years ago. Even before the dinosaurs, the West swarmed with strange creatures. Witness our next picture, number 14. This is a skeleton of a dimetrodon in the American Museum of Natural History. The dimetrodon lived in Texas way before the first brontosaur appeared. He was seven feet long, pretty large even for a Texan. Instead of a 10-gallon hat, he sported an impressive sail on his back, indicated by the huge spines we see sticking up here. In picture 15, we see the Dimetrodon restored to life in a painting by the famous museum artist, the late Charles R. Knight. The reason for the sail is not definitely known. One theory has it that it was a protective device, another that it acted as a radiator, providing a cooling surface on hot days and a sun-absorbing surface on cold ones. But neither theory has been proved. Move now to number 16. Here we see the skeleton of an allosaur crouched over the backbone of a brontosaur, the hunter and its victim. There were actual tooth marks on this brontosaur, marks that could have been made by the savage bite of an allosaur. In picture 17, we see the allosaur fully restored and in its natural surroundings. It must have been a fearsome sight as it stalked the land on its powerful hind legs, its jaws wide open for the attack and the hook-like claws of its forefeet ready to grasp its prey. Imagine a dinosaur football team. Here's a 35-foot long charging fullback guaranteed to make the opposition tremble. Move now to number 18. Here's the skeleton of a stegosaur, the so-called plated dinosaur found in Wyoming. Stegosaurs were walking fortresses, huge animals protected by thick skin, carrying a deadly four-spiked weapon in the tail and armored by the upright triangular plates we see here. For a look at a stegosaur fully clothed, please move to picture 19. It must have had few enemies in spite of its clumsiness, as well as being built like a tank it could punch four holes at a time in the hide of its enemy with a swing of that powerful spiked tail. Note the tiny head, a body as big as an elephant, a brain the size of a walnut. Brawn, not brains, paid off in the dinosaur age. Now we come to number 20. Here is a restoration of two trachodons, or duckbills, so-called for reasons that become obvious as we gaze at their broad, flattened skull. They lived 60 million years after the stegosaurs, an age that might be called the twilight of the dinosaurs, because during it, all the dinosaurs disappeared from the face of the earth. The duckbills browsed along the shallows of rivers and lakes, as we see here, munching on water plants. They and other dinosaurs bore their children in the form of eggs. In picture 21, we see a sensational find the fossilized skeleton of a dinosaur and some eggs. They were discovered by Dr. Roy Chapman Andrews of the American Museum of Natural History during an expedition to Outer Mongolia. The little horned dinosaur in our picture was named after Dr. Andrews. Its full name is Protoceratops andrewsi. Move now to number 22. Here are some more dinosaur eggs discovered on the same expedition. Wouldn't they make a king-sized omelet, though? When found, these eggs were at first thought to be of fossil birds until the scientists discovered, curled up inside some of the shells, tiny, unhatched dinosaurs. In picture 23, 
we see a restoration of baby dinosaurs just after hatching. It may be stretching things to call these little protoceratops cute, but their parents probably wouldn't think much of human babies either. It's all in the point of view. Now let's look at a relative of our little protoceratops in picture 24. This is a skeleton of the mighty three-horned triceratops, perhaps the best known of the horned dinosaurs. Triceratops grew to 30 feet in length and stood eight feet high at the hips. Compare its size with the young lady in the background here. Its most remarkable features were its enormous head and frill making up one third of its length. If you will turn the slide card over, we will come to number 25 and a restoration of a triceratops. Triceratops hooked with its horns when challenged to a battle and made short, powerful lunges with its head down. The two horns over its eyes could impale any enemy. Such an arrangement must have been very useful for the three-horned dinosaur lived in a land inhabited by Tyrannosaurus rex, whom we meet in picture 26. Here he is, the fiercest, most destructive killer the world has ever known, Tyrannosaurus rex standing on thickly muscled hind legs, carried his tremendous head 18 to 20 feet above the ground. He was 50 feet long from head to tail, and he weighed some eight or 10 tons. The curved daggers of his teeth were almost six inches long. No wonder the whole world feared him. Move now to number 27 for a look at him as he might have appeared in real life. Tyrannosaurus rex is the largest meat-eating animal that ever lived on land. This all-time heavyweight champion used a combination of terrible claws and rending teeth to conquer any opponent. Its scientific name was well-earned. Tyrannus, Tyrant, Saurus, Lizard, Rex, King, or King of the Tyrant Lizards. Move now to number 28. So far, we have seen only reptiles that walked. However, some of them flew, and one of the most impressive of these was the one we see here the Pteranodon. This giant flying machine, its wing spread is some 27 feet, lived 70 to 100 million years ago. It probably glided and soared as much as it flew. Now let us move to picture 29 to see an ancestor of our modern birds. Here is a skeleton cast in plaster of the prehistoric bird Archaeopteryx. Fossils of this primitive perching bird were first discovered in Germany many years ago. The first discovery was by accident, as so often happens. Workmen cutting out ancient limestone blocks from a quarry found the impressions of a feather in one, and then an imperfect skeleton of a bird far more primitive than any now in existence. In number 30, we see a restoration of this prehistoric bird. Notice how this strange-looking creature combines features of both birds and reptiles. Its plumage reminds us of today's birds, but see the reptilian teeth and the long reptilian tail with feathers arranged on either side of it. Move now to picture 31. Here is a fossilized brontosaur footprint, possibly made as the huge vegetarian fled through mud toward open water. Inside the brontosaur footprint is the smaller three-toed track of the meat-eating allosaur that was chasing it. Did the allosaur catch its meal, or did the brontosaur reach safety in deep water? It's a hundred million year old detective story that nobody will ever solve. Our final picture is a restoration of our brontosaur, its long, snaky neck looming above the ancient marsh plants on constant lookout for an approaching enemy. We've learned a good deal as dinosaur detectives. We've seen how scientists have been able to reconstruct these giant creatures and their way of life from bits of fossilized bone and impressions in the rock. Man rules now where once the dinosaur was king. But before we dismiss the dinosaurs as failures because they became extinct, let us consider. We've been here, at the most, a few million years. The dinosaurs dominated the world for 120 million years. We've got a long, long way to go.